Harry Gune Guardini from the um, Canadian Food Inspection Agency. Um, she's going to present uh, some results on alternative sampling and testing, um, mostly focusing also on the work that they have done with oral fluids and point of care testing. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? So thank you, Andres, um, for inviting me. Um, originally, uh, my boss was supposed to be here, Dr. Aruna Ambagala. I'm pretty sure some of you have met him. He's a research scientist. So I am a veterinarian and a research scientist at the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, National Center for Foreign Animal Disease. And today I'm sharing some of the work we've done so far in the past, I would say, four to five years um, with different alternative sample types as well as um, point of care tests for ASF. A little introduction about our facility. We are uh, CFIA and CFAD located very close to here in Winnipeg, uh, Manitoba in Canada. Um, NCFAD is the National Reference Laboratory for Foreign and Emerging Animal Diseases. So we perform diagnostic testing in the national level for foreign animal diseases, several viral pathogens, um, and also a lot of um, research in terms of ASF, CSF, and are there so many um, high impact viral pathogens in our facility. Uh, we're located together with the Public Health Agency of Canada in uh, one facility. Um, and we have CL2, CL3, CL3 AG, and CL4 laboratories where we conduct all our research and some parts of the diagnostics. Uh, we're also a VOA reference laboratory uh, for African swine fever recently in 2022, and CSF, high path and low path avian influenza, foot and mouth disease. And we're also a FAO reference center for foot and mouth disease and zoonotic and emerging pathogens. So we have a lot of capacity for um, lots of countries to come and collaborate and do collaborative research with us. And we offer diagnostic uh, support specifically to uh, our region and also Asia and African regions. We've been doing a lot. Um, just jumping directly into my topic today, why is early detection of ASF important? So if you look at this um, diagram here, this shows um, a comparison of three diseases, ASF, CSF, and FMD, um, with the course of two to four weeks about the um, spread of the disease within a pen. So you can see that ASF has rather low contagiousness, even though eventually it leads to 100% mortality in the animals. So if you identify early enough, there is higher chance of controlling the disease and eliminating it from an infected premise. So when it comes to early detection, at the moment, we are mostly reliant on blood and uh, samples such as samples that are recommended by WOA, uh, tissue samples such as spleen, certain lymph, lymph nodes, and also blood samples for molecular level diagnostics. But we are looking at alternative sample types like Karen talked about in her presentation, um, mostly non-invasive sample types that you can easily collect on farm level without having to go through a lot of training um, and invasive procedures. So these type of sample types help us to um, strengthen the surveillance programs right now. And also we can collect samples directly from live animals, aggregate sample types such as oral fluids and processing fluids. And also if you have dead animals, we can utilize those um, animals for our passive surveillance pro uh, programs, such as superficial lymph nodes, skin biopsies, meat exudates, like she was talking about, the meat juices, also muscle swabs, so <coughs> samples like that. And then next part of my presentation talks about the various portable uh, field uh, point of care tests, uh, instruments, and also about the rapid uh, diagnostic methods that we have tested a little bit in our facility under our research program. First, talking about the alternative sample types. So there are group sample types that we have looked at, such as oral fluids and processing fluids, and also individual sample types that I'll be sharing about some of our findings, uh, superficial lymph nodes, skin biopsies, meat exudates mainly. 
oral fluids. So this is an easily collected aggregate sample type. You basically hang a cotton roll uh, for the pigs and let them chew it for 30 minutes. And it is a mixture of saliva and oral mucosal transudate that gets collected onto the, uh, soaked onto the rope, and then you can easily squeeze it out of the rope. And um, this is actually currently widely used in the industry for the diagnosis of other swine pathogens. So if, if we need to use it for ASF, obviously we just piggyback on the sample type. So yeah, for our research, we used uh, this specific uh, product, Tego Oral Fluid Kits, and we hung the rope so the pigs chewed on it, and then we just squeezed it out from the rope and collect it easily. So this um, experiment that I'm sharing about initially, we published this data in uh, 2021 in um, Transboundary and Emerging Diseases, if you want to read about it. And if you have trouble um, downloading it, just let me know. I have my email address at the end. So we conducted this study to see how early can we detect um, ASF in oral fluids if there is an incursion in a pen. So we used, uh, this was done uh, by, with National Pork Board front funding, and we collaborated with Plum Island um, to do the experiments. So in our facility, we tested uh, highly virulent ASF Georgia um, virus with two studies back to back with 25 animals in each study in an industry level pen. Um, and then in uh, Plum Island, we tested the moderately virulent ASF Malta 78 uh, virus. And they have a smaller facility in each uh, pen. And then what we did was we randomly selected one pig, we call this cedar pig in the pen, and we infected that guy, sorry, the cedar pig with uh, the ASF virus. And that was uh, infected intramuscularly to make sure that it got really infected. And it was released into the pen, co-mingled with the others, and then we started collecting oral fluids and other sample types um, every day. So at the same time, we did a clinical scoring and uh, collected rectal temperatures to monitor the disease. And as the animals died, we obviously performed um, meat biopsies. So here, if you look at this table here, it summarizes what we saw. So we were actually able to detect uh, the ASF genome three to five days post introduction of the cedar pig. And the cedar pig in each experiment, well, they, the cedar pig died six to 10 days after getting infected. So at uh, about two to three, d three days before the cedar pig was found dead, we were able to detect um, the ASF <coughs> presence in the oral fluids. So it is fairly early detection when you have this disease spreading in a pen, other pigs are looking fine, you just have one dead pig all of a sudden, yes, you're able to detect it um, at least uh, two to three days before finding um, the, before the death of this uh, cedar pig. So that gives us a clue, okay, let's go test the blood of these animals, can we find ASF? So that's the value of uh, this kind of a sample. So what we can do is, it can be used as a tool for early detection in terms of surveillance as one of the good tools in the toolbox, but you have to take precautions or be cautious when we are interpreting negative oral fluid results because negativity doesn't really mean it's not there, but early enough to detect so that you can test individual samples and come to conclusions. And we have conducted a field evaluation study in Vietnam um, because as Karen said, in order to implement any of these novel sample types, you have to go through validation processes. So this was done with uh, SHIC funding, um, and um, currently we are just wrapping up the data, so I'm not able to show you the data right now, but we will be able to share soon enough. The data is looking promising and resembling very similar to what we saw in our laboratory level. And then talking very briefly about swine processing fluids. So we know that processing is happening in any swine practice when it comes to younger piglets. And uh, the castration and tail docking, at the end of it, you come up with this um, set of tissues that passively generates processing fluids. So why not use it? 
for um, diagnostics. And what we did was this data is still in preparation for publication, so I'm not really sharing you the graphs or anything, uh, but we were able to detect a porn infection of individual animals with um, two moderately virulent ASF strains. We um, identified the presence of ASF genome three to four days post-infection of these animals. So it is looking promising. And then here is another individual sample type that as Karen was mentioning about the screens, how you collect it without much um, invasion or um, like a full necropsy. This is another sample type that we identified as a suitable sample type <coughs> for dead pig surveillance specifically without having to perform a full necropsy. So um, superficial sample uh, lymph nodes such as superficial inguinal lymph nodes that you're seeing here can be easily collected by performing only superficial level uh, incisions. And we were able to identify um, ASF in the superficial lymph nodes when we are in the uh, infected animals. And here, what we are showing is, again, you can read this article. We recently published it. Um, we did see a positive correlation uh, with the spleen detection when it came to superficial inguinal lymph nodes with 100% sensitivity and specificity. So it's another suggest suggestion for future. Um, meat exudates, yes, we also looked at meat exudates in our research and um, identified that um, there is strong positive correlation when meat exudate was tested. It was very strongly correlating with whole blood data. And also looking at the antibody levels in meat exudates, you can see strong correlation with the serum as well. And then moving on to uh, some point of care tests. Um, there are various novel battery powered portable thermocyclers available right now in the market. So we were able to test um, very few of them, specifically focusing on the Franklin by uh, Biomeme. And these are some of the products available. Um, they are very useful in the field level deployments um, when you don't have access or the kind of uh, support for molecular, other molecular diagnostics. So Biomim, uh, this is a paper published by us uh, in 2021. So the work was done around 2018 up to 2019. Um, Biomim comes with a syringe-based nucleic acid extraction, which you can use, or you can use other um, extraction methods. But it tests up to nine samples, very quick, and you, it, it operates with an app so you can upload uh, PCR and GPS metadata and real-time monitoring can be done. Um, what we did was we transferred our diagnostic assay, which is the Tignon assay, um, together as a duplex, a duplex assay using the Biomeme system and without losing any uh, sensitivity or specificity. So it can be used in future when there's need. This is our um, data, how the positive correlation is looking uh, with the, the biomeme extraction and the Franklin versus the, our MagMax extraction and CFX96 uh, real-time PCR. So uh, something that was done in that study was uh, the biomeme was tested in uh, seven ASF suspected farms in Vietnam. Um, and they also saw the same kind of sensitivity and specificity compared to laboratory-based methods. So it can be recommended uh, with uh, relevant uh, validations. So yeah, if you read this paper here, you'll be able to see the details. And some other high-end uh, portable molecular assays such as the LAMP assay, RPA assay, and the CRISPR-Cas12 A system. Um, we haven't really tested these, but I'm just mentioning that they're out there. So advantages when you look at it, portable high uh, field deployable assays are high sensitivity and high specificity, um, but they can be relatively costly. Um, and you also require some technical help with extraction and pipetting. So you have to train people for that, but definitely great for outbreak investigation 
testing sick and dead animals and also for quarantine purposes. And then going on to um, lateral flow based assays, which are kind of a um, very popular topic. Um, everyone's interested in them. So these are antibody based assays for ASF antigen testing. So different um, producers are out there and our work has been mainly focused on pen check assay. So these are cheap, easy, quick assays. We are all familiar with COVID testing. So this is the same uh, principle, high specific, highly specific, but could be very low sensitive compared to the molecular counterpart assays. So basically pen check is a dipstick assay. Um, what we found was the limit of detection was very high. So there has to be a higher viral load in order to be detected. So otherwise it's a high speci highly specific assay. Um, it detects almost all pigs showing acute clinical signs such as fever and depression. So they have to be acutely viremic. Um, and we also detected ASF antigen in tissues collected from the pigs that were come to ASF as well. So it can be used at herd level screening, but we would not suggest it for individual animal testing. So yeah, again, some uh, challenges because it's uh, lateral flow assays are only more sensitive during the peak viral replication and it's not fit for field diagnosis of wild boar carcasses because of the inhibition such as clotting and decay can uh, cause. So yeah, summarizing what I was talking about, there are so many alternative sample types that have been tested and with the validations that are required for each country um, in their federal level, they can be implemented and we can only suggest as scientists based on the data we generate it's always up to the governing bodies to decide what to go with. And field deployable diagnostics again. So with that, huge acknowledgement goes to mostly to the USDA um, and then pork, uh, National Pork Board, SHIC, CFIA internal funding and the support for all this Karen uh, refers to as cool research that we're doing. Um, Dr. Aruna Ambagala is our captain of the ship. Um, he's a veterinarian and a research scientist, currently the um, expert uh, for CSF and ASF in the region. So feel free to contact us if you have suggestions or any um, thing to, you need help with diagnostics or research or any kind of collaborative projects. Um, Dr. Kim Dodd, um, everyone from, Pi she's not there anymore, but at the time, lots of help from Plum Island. Um, Dr. Sandra Bloom from Germany, uh, Dr. Fan, Fan from Vietnam National University of um, Agriculture, Dr. Jeff Zimmerman, and everybody at NCFAD Animal Care and Plum Island, and our whole team. So our team has changed quite a lot, but yeah, we've been training people from other regions, so we have quite a lot of interesting stuff going on. And this is Aruna, uh, if you meet him in the GARA meeting in <laughs> December maybe, in Philippines. So that's uh, the guy who will, you will be talking to, and you'll be sharing more in-depth in research later on. So thank you. If you need any um, questions answered, please <laughs> Kalhari, great presentation. What is Canada, like what is Canada's approach to these novel sample types? Are they gonna use them, or are they not? Do you know? Yeah. Good question. So we recently had uh, the African Swine Fever North American Forum. Um, there was a great discussion about these novel samples. So right now, as a laboratory, um, the National Center, we are in the process of validation, validating um, novel samples, mostly oral fluid. So we ha I would say we have validated pretty much the whole data set that's necessary if it comes to implementing it. Um, I know they're in the discussions right now, but I 
honestly, I'm not in the um, that level of implementing, but we are providing all the data and uh, evidence that it's working and it's suitable for screening. Um, so it would be the operations that will be implementing. I know that they're discussing about it, so they're not yet implementing, but it's in the works, um, specifically for surveillance as, a, as one tool in the toolbox. Um, great, great presentation. I just have a question regarding your thoughts of what would be better sample selection for a disease that spreads so slowly. Right. Would it be better to do the oral fluid or the sick pick or how many oral fluids do we need to collect to detect the sick yeah. pen? Good question. The only thing is it all depends. I can't really recommend one sample type as such. So different sample types have different benefits. Um, oral fluids would be for, I would say, just like how Karen was showing, it depends on the, the age of the pigs or your stage um, the kind of um, production system you're doing, um, and then the surveillance uh, approach. So oral fluids, yes, they are great if the pigs are chewing the rope, if you have the, the kind of um, money to buy the kits. If you can't buy the oral fluid collection kits, you have to use some low-cost um, alternative. Like I know in some countries they use T-shirts, just ripped up. Um, so it is a great sample type. But again, you can't just rely on it. You have to use um, other, the VOA recommended sample types for confirmation regardless. Um, tissues are great for dead pig surveillance. But again, you are only looking at uh, the dead pigs. So you have to go back to the um, live animals and get the blood collect. But all these sample types are reducing the effort that has to go into individual animal sampling on such a frequent basis. So it does add an added level of um, uh, screening. Uh, hi, good morning. Uh, Mike from the Philippines. Uh, I, ju I just want to ask if you have any any uh, experience in using air collect air, in air a samples, air, air samples uh, in, in the diagnosis of uh, of uh, AS ASF. No, unfortunately. So we were supposed to use air samples in one of our experiments, but we could not. So I don't have any experience in terms of, but I don't know if Karen has experience with air sample uh, testing. Because I, I encountered a, a uh, a company uh, who's involved in uh, uh, collecting air samples for mm -hmm. the diagnosis of, diagnosis for of uh, ASF. ASF? Yeah. Okay. No. Thank you. Unfortunately, I haven't. <laughs> what is that? Air sample? Yes. So you can collect um, a sample of air using a device, for um, and then you can elute that air and then test it with your molecular diagnostic technique. So I get a bar and you just say that. Yeah. Yes, so yes, so we didn't really test um, environmental swaths as such. We did at some point, but I haven't really showed that data here. Uh, but we were more uh, interested in meat swabbing, like most of the pig sampling. So yes, environmental samples are great, but then again, you're dealing with very low viral <coughs> loads depending on the stage of infection in a pen. Um, Again, oral fluids can also be an indication of your environment because pig eats everything around and then contributes to the rope. So that it kind of um, indirectly does environmental sample. Thank you. Thank you.